It's time we had a look at NCEA because it's a qualification that's been around since 2002 and it's a great qualification, it's really well respected nationally but we can make it better. It needs to be rigorous, it needs to be clearly understood, it needs to be robust and the changes that have been put in place I think address all of those things. Making NCEA more accessible is one of the key changes, so that involves making sure that all students have access to it. And accessibility isn't just about financial accessibility, it's also about making sure that students who have different learning needs are still able to access the standards and there aren't things that are stopping them able to demonstrate what they know how to do. Māori are stakeholders' feedback that there wasn't um, parity of esteem or equal value or status for mātauranga Māori and this needed to change. For that to happen it means that we need to ensure that there is equal status uh, for mātauranga Māori, te ao Māori within NCEA, that we're looking at new ways to recognise um, mātauranga Māori but also that there is adequate resourcing and support provided to develop teacher capability but also to support our Māori learners and te ao Māori pathways. So one of the changes that we had to make for NCEA was to strengthen numeracy and literacy standards and that was because students were leaving school without being literate or numerate. So there's going to be literacy and numeracy co-requisites for NCEA and what that means is these credits will sit outside the 60 credits that are required for each level. Students can gain these credits any time from year 9 right up until they leave school. Having fewer larger standards is one of the key changes and it's created quite a lot of discussion amongst many people. The feedback that was received from students, teachers and families was that students were doing too much assessment, they have been doing too much assessment. Focusing on that, the learning hasn't been so important and it's really been getting in the way of students' well-being and students achieving well. We need to simplify NCA structure by having 60 credits required to pass at each year level and not carrying credits over from one year level to the next. By focusing on quality and not quantity, that's a positive change as well. Students don't need 200 credits at level one and a similar amount at level two. The quality of the credits is more important and by limiting the number of credits that can be accumulated year on year, then everybody is sitting the same number of credits and it means students can concentrate on trying to get as many credits endorsed as possible. One of the big changes that we'll see is students having clearer pathways, whether it's to further education, work or training. It means that students will know fully that they're on the right track. One of the challenges that we've heard is that for many students, they have had courses that may or may not have led them to where they wanted to go. So it's been really important to develop clear pathways that students understand and so do their teachers. Keeping Level 1 NCA as an option is something that's come out of this review. Um, that Level 1 qualification is going to be a broad, balanced, foundational qualification with the changes that are coming in and it's up to schools individually whether or not they want to ha um, have their students sit Level 1 NCA in Year 11. These changes are going to come in over a period of time, so we'll be piloting the Level 1 standards and then they'll be implemented. We're taking time over this to make sure that we know that we're getting it right, thoroughly testing things in schools before they go out to teachers.